Hey, welcome back to your favorite breakfast show here on Afia Television. My name is Nathalie Uku, and though I'm here alone sometimes, today is not one of those days. I'm with none other than the beautiful, scintillating, sister in the Lord of mine, Favor Binye Lumpa. Favor, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How are you doing? I didn't want your queries this morning, so I added sister in the Lord. Thank you. I appreciate it. I'm learning how to do things the correct way. Yes, now. I appreciate being called sister in the Lord because it's my, um, it's one of my preferred titles. I, I love you know being since, in the Lord. Since when did sister in the Lord my become preferred a, title? It's, it's my own title. What kind of title? Sister in the Lord. Let's forget about it. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, we have a lot coming your way on the Afia Morning Show. Our lineup for the next 20 minutes. We'll begin with a review of our headlines with our national daily to the special guest analyst. Further on the program, we would be connecting with Afia TV correspondents for regional stories. During this time, we'll be exploring the cost of living crisis as it affects different industries in Nigeria. It is also World Glaucoma Week. We will be examining local conditions that increase risks in the Southeast. And finally, finally, we will be investigating matters arising at the University of Nigeria Teaching Hospital following the release of the two kidnapped staff. We will begin with the review of our dailies and joining us live now is Barisa Chidi Ujua Tumba, a human rights lawyer and CEO Ujua Tumba and the company. And I like to add a limited. Good morning, Barisa Chidi. Good morning, Natalie, for having me once again. It's always a pleasure to be here, I it's must say. It's always a pleasure. Yes. So yes. can you juggle our minds again? Yesterday you ended on a really interesting hook. Mm -hmm. And I promised our viewers that today you tell us why. Mm -hmm. Do you remember what that was? Exactly. Tell There's us. no way you can leave my mind. <laughs> we were talking about the, the those who are working for the federal government, that their pension doesn't come when it should, or rather should they depend on their pension. And when they retire, um, they don't really have much again to do with. Within a few couple of years, you hear that probably they have died or something. So it's as though they give their entire life and youth to the government and they're not well, they're not well being taken care of. And I say, I bet to differ and disagree with you because it's not the government that will plan your life for you. You plan your life for yourself. So even when you are taking up that um, opportunity to work for the government, there are also benefits that goes with it, okay? How are you saving? Are you building up your own personal business? How are you energizing your own entrepreneurial spirit? What are the side businesses you, that you can set aside, that you can fall back on, on the day of retirement? They don't care about retirement. They, 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 they live in that comfort zone. Do you know what? They even make the comfort zone more comfortable. And the only time they will remember that the comfort zone is over. It's when it is just a few months to their retirement. So you can't blame the government. You can't blame them. I think if you want to make up your mind to work for the government, if you want to depend, if you want to depend on monthly salary, you must make sure that there will always be a rainy day. There will always be a retirement day. So what are you going to fall back on on that day? And if you start planning from day one, I beg you that I bet you that on that day, you won't feel like you have retired. You will still feel energized. You have businesses all around yourself, employing people, creating employment, adding value to the system, and adding value to yourself. And of course, living longer for your younger, for, for your children and wives, <laughs> instead of just dying after a few um, months or years of retirement. So I think um, they should look into that program and, and provide a kind of a, a training for them or a, a kind of a workshop for them to tell them um, what does life look like after retirement? So it will help them to think and make plans Personal when that day comes. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense because we see um, after we see it all the time. They start to ask, um, ask for pension. Oh, the government has neglected us. But if, you're, if they are being empowered, mm -hmm. you know, even though yes, it's like the government should pay them their pension because you know, they work for yes. the government. But you know, if they are being empowered while they are still working, when they are still very young, which is basically what everybody should have, whether mm -hmm. or not you work in government, mm -hmm. you know, is to get to a point where you will not be able, you will not be as active as you used to be, you know, you will not be the trending face or, you know, there will be something that you will not be able to exactly. offer because of old age, which is very, very, very natural. There are exactly. other people that are still coming up and all of that. But if you have other things that you could use to sustain mm -hmm. yourself and, you know, your investments, you begin to get... As in, if you come to receive your pension, you'll be looking so fresh, they'll be asking you, ah. well, what are, where are you working? I didn't take up another job. Because I have been to... Let me not mention the parastatus, but I've been to so many parastatus in Enugu State and also within the federal parastatus. If you see retirees, the way they will sit, squat, looking so haggard and hunted, clamoring, carrying placard, begging for them to be paid their pension. Because at that time, that's all they are depending on. 
nothing to fall back on, no savings, no business, nothing. So it's, it's a very uh, pitiable situation. And all it takes is one health crisis for things to go the other way. Well, I, I'm really happy with that. Personal responsibility yeah. is definitely key. We'll begin our review this morning by looking at the Vanguard. And the cover story here reads, 287 Kaduna students, abductors demand 1 billion naira, vow to kill victims in 20 days. Military vows to rescue school children, says abduction succeeded because the military was not notified on time. Notes school children taken to, taken to terrain difficult to access. I'll take that again. Notes school children taken to terrain difficult to access. Explains reason for upsurge in mass abduction. Away from that, teachers welfare packages. Government requires 347 billion naira to pay monthly salaries. Alleged 3.7 trillion naira budget padding. Atiku joins free. Demands probe. Damaged undersea cable disrupts internet services in Nigeria, African countries. Tinubu to governors. It's time for governance. Let's set aside political differences. Port Harcourt refinery will deliver petrol in two weeks, said by Kiari. Benway, armed headsmen killed 147 in two months. Ethnic leaders chair said that. 50 taxes will be reduced to single digits in Lagos, said by LIRS chair Suber. I'll start with the Daily Times. Article 6 probe of alleged 3.7 trillion naira budget padding. It's fake allegation, Senate. EFCC names ex Kogi Governor Yahya Bello in alleged diversion of 100 billion naira. NGX index closes positive as investors gain 27.64 billion naira. Amendment of Student Loan Scheme Act scales second reading. Patakot Refinery to start production in two weeks, Kiari. First Lady proposes TIFA penalty for kidnappers and CBN bars banks from profiting from forex revaluation. And moving on straight to the punch. School attacks. Bandits demand 1 billion naira for 287 pupils. Issue March 27th deadline. Kidnappers called on Tuesday. Gave us 20 days to raise ransom, says community leader. Hostages held in difficult location, used as human shield to prevent bombardment, credited to the DHQ. Politics over, it's time for governance, Tinubu tells governors at IFA. Nigeria leads as ECOWAS members default on 150 judgments. Many injured, 18 arrested, as youths attack Ogun Monarch. Amotekun heightens security in Oshun boundary communities. Facebook, Netflix, Google, others pay 3.2 trillion naira tax, said by the NBS. Senate reviews 30 trillion naira loan documents, summons CBN officials. Portacot Refinery gets 450,000 barrels crude, resumes operations April. I'm moving over to this day paper. Telco submarine operators confirm major cut on subsea cable in Red Sea. Customers experience major disruptions in Nigeria, Ghana, South Africa, Liberia, Senegal, and Cote d'Ivoire. NCC Telco say no cause for alarm as investigation, restoration ongoing. NSA service chiefs, northern governors meet behind closed doors over rising insecurity. NNPC vows to end fuel importation in 2024 as PH refinery begins production in two weeks. Ningi alleges plot to arrest him as constituents seek reversal of suspension. I'm moving on straight to the nation. Federal government eases access to student loan in new proposal. Guarantors' parents' debts, others' huddles cleared. False information is felony. Bill skills second reading. Federal government insists discourse must recapitalize for efficiency. Government remodeling ports to raise standard, says Oyetola. EFCC uncovers how REA MD chiefs misappropriated 12.4 billion naira. Labor plans showdown with states not paying wage award. 
daily independence, but I got refinery to start, to start operation in two weeks. Mele Kiari. Tinubu appoints Dennis Otuaro, Administrator of Presidential Amnesty Program. Despite threats to kill 286 Kaduna peoples, staff DHQ vows to rescue them. Makinde announces passage of Olubadon. 147 persons killed in Benway by headsmen in two months, says MUT. Ask Sultan to apologize to Tim for calling them cattle thieves. Tinubu relocates NAC, NAC, uh, NACA to Health Ministry, names Timitokwe Ilori as DG. Upgrade Federal College of Dental Technology to Varsity. Confusion as CSCC names ex Kogi governor in amended corruption allegations perpetrated before he became governor. Mm -hmm. Constitution review help us read out analog laws, Akpabio tells MBA, urges body to flush out quacks from ranks. Nigerian troops killed 213 terrorists, nabbed 283 others. Telibu asked NASS to repeal, reenact student loans law. Senate reps to relocate to main chambers next month after two years. I'm moving straight to Nigerian Tribune. In security, NSA security chiefs, northern governors meet, military working with foreign partners to rescue abducted citizens said by the DHQ. Obabalogun, Olubadon, or Bibadon land join ancestors. Potakot refinery to begin production in two weeks, Kiari says, says 50,000 barrels of crude delivered. Crude oil production increases in Nigeria, Libya, credited to OPEC. International undersea cables in West East Africa damaged. Internet services banking affected. Alleged budget padding. Atiku demands immediate probe. Federal government sets aside 100 billion naira for consumer credit in 2024 budget credited to Bagudu. Tinubu transmits student loan bill to reps. Lawmakers have no business with constituency projects credited to Akintola. In um, budget pardon, in sessions by National Assembly Legal, Bagudu, and Mondeli Trust now, Akpabio won't resign. Riders, Senate spokesman replies PDP. Principal officers received over 200 million naira in Dume, Atuku demands pro. Potai Court Refinery to commence preparation in two weeks. Kano POS operator returns 9.9 .9 million naira mistakenly transferred to his account. Drunken father mistakes nine-year-old daughter for wife. School abductions, NSA service chiefs, northern governors meet. How man allegedly killed sister's husband over 20 naira salt. Tinubu Rights National Assembly demands reenactment of Student Loan Act. All right, Barista Chidi. Mm -hmm. I'm still scandalized yeah, by what you, like, what oh you read. I, I know we have a lot of stories, but I'd like to start with that one. Can mm -hmm. you take that again? That father... Drunken father mm -hmm. mistakes nine-year-old daughter for wife. How in the world is that possible? He's drunk. Drunken. How? <laughs> He's drunk. Too much. He's drunk. Isn't, are you sure it's not a cover-up for pedophilia? That's another reason. It's drunk. Depends on the age of the daughter. Nine, Nine years old. old. Oh my God! Did I hear that word? No, 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 I mistake for your wife. It's, it's, I think it should, that should be probe. <laughs> <laughs> there has to yes, be a probe. So we are, all we are calling for, for, for probe a thorough probe of this matter. issue. Please. We need to get to the root of it. Because I think I, how we even show him is took anyone for anything. Yes, it, it could be a cover-up, yes. And then he now said, oh, I, just, I, I thought she was my wife. Because nobody would want to believe that you would intentionally Lee. go hurt. and abuse ah, hurt your own daughter, daughter underaged. Daughter. It's something kind else. Of trauma that that girl is going to have to forever. Do. Forever, that relationship. She really needs damaged. to be worked on. If not, mm -hmm. if she takes that, you know, and and grows up with it, she will definitely feel bitter for the rest of her life. It's not. It's terrible. I agree with you when you say that there should be a probe. There yes. should be a probe. It's a serious probe. Now Hopefully. let's look at this major story here. Two eighty-seven Kaduna students, abductors demand one billion naira, vow to kill victims in twenty, 20 days. As you can see now, um, 
because of the statements that Mr. President made, yes, it, it, it. it's now bringing a reaction from the abductors, the kidnappers, okay? They now know that Mr. President is not encouraging uh, the payment of ransom. And they are making their threats more, you know, more serious, okay? That's how it should be. This is how these things play out, okay? Because if they know where they are, there was a, a, um, there was something you read out that they know where they are, but they are using these abductors as a human shield, okay? This is where they need to actually bring in um, foreign expatriates to enable them, cut down off the entire place where they are, and make sure that they rescue them. It's possible. They can rescue them. I trust these men. When they go outside the shores of this country, they are always the best. Our military, our police, they are always the best. They are always be When they go outside the shores of the country, because they are probably, there's no corrupt, the corruption is not as thick as it is here. But I know that this is a call to duty, okay? This is a national assignment. And I think both the Nigerian military and the police should rise up to this occasion and make sure that they rescue these abductors. Not even one should be hurt. Let them rescue... You mean the abductees? Ad abductees, sorry. They should rescue all the adoptees and bring them home and nothing should happen to them. It will give us confidence that we have men and women who are ready to fight back whenever such thing happens. Do you think yes. the military can give that excuse that these abductors made away with the children because they were not informed on time? Should not being informed of, on time be an excuse for not being able to Yes, I saw, them? I saw that right. Yes, I saw it. But before you make an allegation of not being informed in time, there must be well, the victims a informed that they will be no no out. apart from that because definitely there's no way the victims can they don't write you a letter yeah. but there is a proactive measure that the security intelligence ought to have taken like um, an emergency call call line okay is there anything like an emergency call line so can you just be in the limbo and all of a sudden there's there, there's a kidnapping attack and the members of the community will out of the blue start who, who are they supposed to call that's the point i'm trying to make the um, accusations of the military could be meaningful if they had given out, okay, a hotline or a response line, a line that you can use to get to them. If you hear anything, if you see anything, just give us a call. So there will be a rapid response. If such thing is not in existence, I think it will be making noise by telling that, that, that they were not informed, uh, exactly. informed on time. Exactly. How accessible is it? Mm. How exactly. accessible are they on the event of this? How accessible are they? There, there's a way this thing, even when telephone have not been invented. Hmm? Do you know, there's always a man that climbed the highest tall building or tower or a tree to monitor. When you see invading forces, you understand, you blow a trumpet or you, I mean, I'm talking to you that when there is no invention of telephone, not to talk of now, that telephone is all over the places. No telephone and you can tell the community there's enemies are invading, abductors are coming, kidnappers are killers are coming. For um, children to be scurried into a hiding place and let the warriors come out and face them. Any proactive or security measure that the community have, to, I'm talking in a community level, when there is no invention of telephone. Not to talk of now, there is telephone. I think all these communities should be, I don't know whether there should be, I, 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 we've talked about community policing here, where certain security tips could be provided for them in the schools, in the churches, to enable them, you know, when you respond proactively, it lowers the number of casualties at the end of the they day. They were looking at Tinubu's, in quote, proactive response, yes. saying that paying the ransom is off the table. What do you consider the ripple effects of that statement that some people have referred to as unfiltered? No, no, no. I, 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 okay, maybe because of my security background, okay, I, I think eh, when you make such statements, the abductors will be rattled. It is not easy to slaughter 287 persons. The purpose is not to slaughter them. The purpose is to make money out of them. So they will keep on re-energizing and re-engineering on how they can increase pressure to force either the families to start paying without the government knowing so that they can get money. So it, they, can, they could make a mistake. So if we have a capable, a, if we have a capable security force, you okay, this is the time to, you know, marshal out a plan 
that can help you to neutralize these abductors. That's how it works, even in the Western world. You keep on making them to make mistakes. You keep on telling them there's no way we can give you this money. No one will pay. Do you know what they will do? They will start looking for how to connect individual families. And in connecting individual families, telecoms and all these people, NIM, you can link them, you can find out where they are. Oh, this is the point. Them. This is the you point. This is the point that you can, you know, engage them with intelligence, find out where they are, neutralize them. And then you set up a standard on how you can be working with all these banks because they've called. They didn't use a tank crier. They, they've called. They made a call. They made a call from one point to the other. And we're here talking. These abductors have placed a demand of one billion naira to the families. Okay? And we're here talking. Who made that call? From what point did that call emanate? And where did it end? We can trace this in. Within, within, within six hours, you can trace this call. We have the technology. Why don't they deploy it? They should know where they are. They should go after them. They should go after them. Look, I am of the opinion that if you hire a coach, okay, to coach a football team, and the football team is doing very well, they're achieving results, you will always give a thumbs up to the coach. But if you hire someone and the person is just sitting and the team keeps on losing matches, what do you do? You fire the coach. The, Mr. President is not really taking out drastic measures towards those who are in the force. Because if he's doing that, if, if he fires them, one, if, there's any, um, if there's any kidnapping activity and you don't come up with tangible and cogent explanation of how it happened or how to get them within the next possible hours, I'll fire you. Because that's why you are there. That's why the government is paying you. Not for you to occupy a seat, but for you to think and use your brain and deploy all the, uh, all the uh, resources within, your, within the ambit of, of your office to ensure that, not that you don't have to run in after them or trolling them, to make sure it doesn't happen. That's where we start, Natalie. We start from making sure it doesn't happen. Definitely. Okay, let, let's move away from that and look at the Potakot refinery. Yes. That's, a, that's a big one. Yes, that in two weeks, come April, it's going to be ready. Fable. <laughs> I, there's this particular rider on the punch. PH refinery gets 450,000 uh, 450, barrels crude resumes mm -hmm. operations in April. It's exciting news. To yeah, start with. very, like, very exciting. It's exciting. If people are, I, 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 I don't drive, I don't have a car. But I know people that do, and the way they complain about fuel and fuel consumption, and I, you know, power is something. People that buy fuel for generators and people that buy fuel for, for their cars. But the thing is, I'm sorry to say this, but I've been seeing all talk and no do, do administration. Yeah. If you want to even talk about student loan that told us it's going to come on Thursday, then on Tuesday we heard they've shifted it. Uh -huh. So it, we we see a lot of talk and talk and talk and talk and talk and talk, and then it comes to headlines. We talk about it, we're excited, and then. They say it's going to happen in April. Okay, let's everybody's going to get forward to it. But my number one fear is is this thing going to be something that is it going to be another all talk and no do? <laughs> is it going to change the um, prices of fuel? Like if we start to because I saw there's another rider that we're going to limit the um, importation of fuel or something like that. I saw another rider on papers. But is it really going to be as they said it? Are we going to see changes in fuel prices? Is the fuel pump prices is it going to come? Uh, I, I believe in the heat of this economic tomorrow okay the federal government and uh, everybody working for them is doing everything to ensure that um, poverty is ameliorated both short-time measures and long-term measures. we've talked extensively on this studio about the effectiveness of putting our refineries back to work and no one can shy away from the fact that it would definitely create employment it would definitely ensure that uh, we don't import fuel, okay, because the importation of fuel with dollar goes a long way to increase the cost of that product itself because it's, it's, uh, it doesn't really make sense. You, you have the natural resources on your ground and you have to excavate it and now export it outside the shores of your country, get it refined and bring in the refined water. It doesn't really, it has never made sense to me. Put it into consideration, you have four refineries in Nigeria and when you put when you add the one that recently built by Janko it will be five and none of them can refine the oil. I think it's a political reason. It's a political reason. And if they can get it right this time, it will put a smile on the face of Nigeria. It will improve our economy. It will make fuel to either at least be stable for a long period of time or it can even bring down 
the price of pump fuel on a daily basis. I think it's a welcome development if it will happen just as it has been said. <laughs> Sorry to be a bit cynical. Okay. To some of the effects of being in Nigeria. I also think it could, next thing we'd see is, because we've seen it, it's not the first time it has happened. They tell us they want to do something, then Yang come out two weeks later after that thing has launched and say, we spent 71 trillion naira oh my God. on PH refinery. Finary. No, no, no. Do you think it's something we also see? No, no, no. We go and look, Google it. You'll see how much Nigeria has spent. Do you know, since, do you know that our refinery broke down in, in the year 2000? Look, look, look at the history. That's when, that's when um, subsidy was created. It was immediately after the breaking of the refinery that subsidy was created, okay, to ameliorate the cost. Have you seen it now? So, do you know the amount of billions that have pumped into all this refinery in the name of renovation? Starting from Bassanjo to Good Lord Jonathan to Yaradua to a lot. A lot. We are tired of crying. So what I'm saying is, can we get it right this time around? If we can get it right this time around, and um, the Potaco refinery is functional, we can now say, okay, within the next six months, we now face either the Cardinal refinery or the Warren refinery. So if we can get all these refineries functioning, it will go a long way to improve our economy. It will go a long way to affect positively the price of pumped fuel. And that's, a, that's a very, going to be a very big one for our economy. All right. I like how you ask people to Google it uh, because <laughs> now we're having trouble with Google. Okay. As we're seeing that the damage on the sea cables are disrupting internet services, not just in Nigeria, yeah, but some in other countries in African African countries. Yeah. What has been your experience of this cut in network? I, I thought it was uh, probably a... Uh, would I call it a technical hitch or something from MTN because basically I use an MTN and now there was this day I thought someone has hacked my Facebook I couldn't access my Facebook if I try to do anything they'll ask me for my ID for my um, my code my my password and everything so I keep on trying to log in and they keep on telling me there's an error somewhere I called friends I, I was really really asking questions what was what's going on and I think Towards the evening, the system was restored. So if you check, you can find out that within the last couple of weeks, there have been a whole lot of network problem. Probably that's the cause. I thought it was basically something that is within Nigeria or something that is within the network uh, uh, providers within the country. But they have now made us understand that was a damage, something was damaged. The, the high sea cable has been damaged and it is affecting a whole lot of it. Uh, I, 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 I am, I am looking at it from another perspective. Let, are we protected? Our data, are they protected? Could this cause someone to probably hack and have access to people's data and have access to people's conversation and all the rest of them? I don't know the extent of damage, so let me not speculate too much, but I think those in charge should quickly um, fix it. So it's also affecting international calls. Those who have been trying to make international calls, it's affecting almost every system for the past couple of days. Now, I think it's something that requires uh, immediate uh, attention. I was yeah. also hearing, um, as people were having conversation, and I, I did not eavesdrop, they were talking around me. <laughs> <laughs> I heard that it's the Hamas war, like they are trying to send a signal, they're trying to get world to other um, countries to also back them and so it's through the Mediterranean you know when you end the conversation not concerning you and you hear it, it doesn't make any sense but I think what made sense out of this was like they are trying to get a signal across to other countries get other countries to back them so other countries can feel what they are feeling as well you mean it's a terrorist attack yes okay no, 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 to, that's a conspiracy that's a conspiracy I'm confirm, gonna have to yes. look, look into that because the fiber optics if you look at the protection of the fiber optics that moved from Nigeria to through Africa to Europe to the United States how it is built it's, it's, it's not something that you can easily get to, you understand this fiber optics is well protected and it has a what do you call it um, it has sensor even if when uh, things objects are coming like some uh, meters away from it those who are monitoring it would yeah. sensor it yeah, and know that we, an object we, is we coming closer to we it can't we can't take away the yeah. angle of possible sabotage yeah. it could be there for but the motivation is what is unclear yeah because if, if you know the motivation behind it then you'll be able to you find out what exactly is going on exactly. but now the motivation the motive is what is the problem what we can't understand now the question on everyone's mind will be, and you can't answer it, but I have to voice it because that's what okay. everyone is thinking. How long? How long? How long will this, will this 
poor connection last? Wow. Because we can't give the answer. We're thinking about how long it took, or how it's not even the power system, the power grid is still having issues, though it's not now it moved from the grid to the Jenkos. Mm -hmm. We're not looking at internet, and internet is central to our world. In internet is very, very important. People are asking how long, long. are we going to go through this? It's not just Nigeria now, it's mm. involving other Yes, African that's the thing. Is, that's one of the reasons that's why, why it I'm makes more sense to me. Like, this maybe something is because it's not just a Nigerian thing. We have Ghana, we have Cote d'Ivoire, we have um, other yeah, countries. Yes. It's just other countries that are also experiencing this downtime in networks. So That's what I'm telling you. If it was actually a terrorist attack, okay, like you're rightly trying to, you know, uh, put it, it will not just affect only African nations. It will affect affect all the nations in the what do you call it, uh, Middle East. Some are uh, Europe, like you have Morocco, you have Spain, and then Africa because that's the central, that's where Middle East, that's where they could have effected the attack. So, probably is a damage, anything could happen inside the sea. So, let's see how far it goes. International, it's an international um, yes. problem, and I think it will, it will like get an international um, um, solution. Yeah, that's that's <laughs> what we're happy about mm, an international solution yeah. because if it was localized to Nigeria, exactly, you know, it might take time. It will be many before they will award contracts many or more take, back the, take back the take back the legislation <laughs> back to Senate for them to repeal and before they, you know, we have a lot of processes here. Bureaucratic mm. bottleneck. Yeah. It's always not easy to get the right things done because of the administrative, you know, bottleneck that things could go through. But I am of the opinion that if the student loan scheme is going there was a rider i saw it's as though the area they want to effect a change is on the area of accessibility of the loan mm -hmm. we have talked about it here that there is no way you can be asking someone who is in the level of assessing such loan to now bring someone who is outside reach, like a, is he a level 18 or level 14 mm -hmm. uh okay. level 16 to come and shorten him to take that it doesn't really make sense so if they can use other professionals or entrepreneurs or people who are known in the in, in, in a community who are tested and trusted that they can vouch for you to take that loan and then i think it will make it to be more accessible to a whole lot of students Definitely. than making it just uh, 16 uh, level 16 uh, person in the yes service. I mean, yeah. that we hope that they are being as specific you know they're planning in line with the consultation that you've just yeah. given because the problem has always been implementation exactly i hope that this is not going to be similar to what we've seen in other sectors of nigerian economy we'll continue to contend with the network challenges and hope that as the day progresses we uh, receive more information perhaps to clear the air on the conspiracies that have started to build and definitely on afia tv we'll be bringing you updates as we move ahead.